Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here. And today is Casing Tuesday, and that's the day when we take a card out of the catalog and give it a makeover. And you are welcome to join us on our Facebook group, and I have put the link down below for you so you can go check it out. Every week we have a group of bloggers that participates regularly, and then we invite all of you to come in and share us share with us your cards because we're all starting from the same starting point it is a card of the catalog and we just give it a makeover we last week i really went off off the the sketch but i typically try and really use the sketch and this week i made a few little changes but i think i really like the way it turned out Good morning to all of you. I hope you are having a good day so far. I think the sun is um, coming out and uh, so that's always a nice thing. And uh, this morning, I, I'm really thinking about uh, my, uh, my customers and my friends and my followers and my team members in Florida and I'm a little worried about them. And I hope uh, everyone, if you're from Florida, that you're getting away from the coastal areas. It seems a little scary right now and moving inland and, and trying to find a place uh, to weather that storm that's coming your way. Craziness. Um, I hope everyone will be safe. Um, so um, anyway, that was on my mind this morning, but um, I'm going to share with you the card um, that we are making over today. And here it is so on initial uh, thought with this card I was like what am I gonna do with this card so what I would do I I did something a little different but you can just basically follow the layers really well if you don't have flowers you can substitute those flowers out for whatever die cut shape or stamped image you want um, that little greeting just pop a little greeting in there and I think you're going to find this isn't too hard. Um, so here is, I'm going to also share with you the sketch. Oh, that's not the sketch. Here's the sketch. Here is the sketch. Um, and so this will just kind of give you an idea of the measurements. Of course, you're welcome to tweak them because we are going to be substituting out. So your greeting might be longer or shorter or um you might need to delete one of the layers and, and that's fine. Uh, it is the starting point and then you take it from there. Um, and uh, that's kind of the fun thing. When we go to look at all the cards, you will see that so many of them, you can see the bones of the card, but you're like, wow, all of these cards are different, but they have the same starting point. So that's kind of the neat thing about our challenge. Well, I will talk to all of you at the end. And as always, if you have any questions along the way, I am always happy to answer them at the end. I get a little distracted, so I don't do it during uh, unless I happen to see it. Um, but it's it's hard because I'm trying to concentrate on giving good directions for my card. So let me switch over to my other camera and I'm going to show you the card that I made today. All right. Here it is. And um, so there were, I think there were about two or two layers um, in here and I merged them into one. I wanted to use, this is the warm welcome bundle. This is one of the bundles that we will be using this Saturday for World Card Making Day. And I hope you will join us. I left a link, um, you'll have to go over to my blog. Um, it's the very first link when you um, go to the description of this video. If you click on the link and you go to my blog, you will find in the first paragraph a link to register for World Card Making Day. And um, you can join us virtually. It's a free event that will be run by Stampin' Up! And it will be recorded. So what I would suggest, even if you can't make it at that very time on Saturday that they're having it, go ahead and register it because then they're gonna send you an email 
email afterwards saying this is where you can find the recording of the event. Um, and so one of the bundles that they're going to be using is the warm welcome bundle. And you're welcome to substitute, but if you want this cute bundle, I'll show it to you in a second. Um, then um, if you order the bundle before October 1st, you're going to get a package. I'm going to use them today. This is half a package that I somewhat use of the iridescent pearl basic jewels. You can, when you're putting the warm welcome bundle into your cart, right afterwards, put the item number for these jewels, 158987, and you can get a free package. Um, uh, there are three bundles uh, to choose from. One of them is called uh, Cottage Rose. The other one I think is called Cottage Wreaths. Cottage Wreaths bundle. Um, so Cottage Rose, Cottage Wreath or Warm Welcome bundles. Either one of those three bundles will get you a um, iridescent pro basics jewels you just need you can only um redeem for one of these so um you can order all three bundles but you can only get one of the pearls during the um ordering period which ends um october 1st is the last day to get these jewels free um, with your bundle order so I wanted to point that out today and we're gonna you can see my little pearls they're on there they're really pretty they just add a little bling actually I used one of the pearls right here I put it right on the doorknob so I thought that was kind of cool just to stick it on the doorknob I put I tried the pearls in different spots but this is the arrangement I came up with that made me happy so it's just such a cute little um uh, bundle so let me show you the bundle this is it it's called warm welcome and it comes with a stamp set and then the warm welcome dies and um, there's like a frame for the door you can this is the door when it's open and this is the inside part of the door so there's lots of different things to do with it there's a little sign hanger there's a cat some gifts and they all have little die cuts and then you've got a few little hearts um, and you've got numbers too you know maybe um, you're making this as a welcome card for a new neighbor you can put their street number um, on on what will be their like a house you can make kind of like a house card I think that would be really uh, a cute thing to do anyway it's a very cute bundle um, and the link to it um, will be in the description of this video so you can check it out if you want to all right and then we've got um this die has been around for about a year but i really like it it is like embossing without the the, the texture stays flat but it's got these really cute stitch leaves really good time of year for this i guess um it's called the stitched greenery die and I don't know if you can see it. I used it in the background right there. And it is also in the background of the sample card um, that I showed earlier. So it just adds a little bit of something in the background without distracting from the main focal point. All right, let's get going. I wanna start off with a piece of Crumb Cake cardstock. And I've got this stamp which is the door stamp. And I'm gonna go just a little bit darker with the ink so it shows up a little bit better. So I'm using soft suede ink. I'm going to have my stamp facing up. This is a, a block, an e-block. Um, it's, it's quite a large stamp, so you're gonna need an e-block for it. And I'm going to ink it when it's facing up and I'm just going to hold there's a little grooves along the edge of your ink pad. So just tap lightly. I have found if you get too much ink and then you squish down too hard, it's going to transfer some of that ink to your um, project, which you don't want. OK, I think that's good. And then we're going to stamp this. Give it a good press because it's a big stamp. Lift. Okay. So there is our little doorway and we're going to die cut that. 
I think that's all the pre-stamping we need to do before die cutting. We've got a bit to die cut, so let's jump right into die cutting. I'm gonna grab my stamp and cut an emboss machine. We're gonna use the big one today because the stitch greenery dies makes it that way that we'll have to do it. So I'll bring this in and let me grab my matching die. And I've got a little post-it um, tape right here and that's just gonna help me keep this die in place. I'm positioning it right around making sure I can just see a tiny bit of the edge of the stamp and then I'm going to pin that down. If I can I'll just twist it just a little bit. It's better for it to go through on a bit of an angle rather than having that flat straight edge hitting it because when that flat edge hits it it sometimes makes a big clunky noise. Okay, so let's see how I did. I'm just gonna carefully release this. Okay, so there is our door. I'm gonna slide this back. Come back here. I'm gonna slide this back over. I like to work from left to right and um, now I'm going to take this door opening and you could do this a little differently. You could layer that white piece on top but I like to create the door opening so I'm just going to center this into that hole and I'm going to pin this down again with some post -it tape, do a little turn and then um, Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, and then we're going to run this through. So I like to pop the the opening, the door opening inside. I I don't know. I I don't I prefer to do that. So that's what you get if you do that. You get kind of like the opening of the door. And then this is just an extra piece. But of course, you are welcome to just layer the white piece on top, which is what I'm going to show you in a moment, is I'm just going to take get out some pieces here. Okay, so I need a white door opening. So I'll place that here. I'm going to die cut one of the hearts. I've got a scrap piece of crushed curry. So we'll put that on there and then we also need a label and I'm just grabbing it. This is all from the same um, die set. Oh, and these little labels, that's what you could put the numbers on. Haha, <laughs> that's cute, but you can also use them for the greetings too. So it does double duty. Okay, so I've got those positioned. I'm going to run this through. I'm loving this bundle more and more the more I used it. Um, our team make and takes this um, month or for October are going to be using this bundle. So I was just using it. So that's why I think it inspired me. So this is going to fit inside this little opening. So I was using it this weekend and cutting out the packets and I, I really liked it. So I wanted to use it today. And there's a little label and you've got a little kind of frame around it so that will be perfect if you want to do house numbers for someone that will be really special if you personalize that like that okay and then we've got our first little heart little crush curry heart okay now we need to cut two more hearts so we'll do a Calypso Coral Heart. I'm following the colors in the original card. So that's kind of neat too. If you want to, you can follow the colors of the card that we're casing. Okay, so here's my Calypso Heart. And then I'm going to do 
a blushing bride heart. I'm gonna run this through backwards now. You can run this through both ways. It's just, I prefer to run it through the other way because it's, it's easier for my brain to do it that way. But it goes through both ways. Okay, and we've got our little heart. Okay, I think I'm done all of the die cutting. We will find out in a moment. Oh, no, nope, I forgot. I forgot one thing before I put my machine away. I want to do my layer with the stitch greenery on it. So this piece of cardstock um, is not the card base. It is a single layer of four inches by five and a quarter inches. And I'm bring in the stitch greenery die. I'm just going to layer these two on top of each other. Put it on an angle. This one is definitely one you will want to put on an angle. Otherwise, it will really be loud when you push it through the machine or crank it through the machine. And um, with this one as well, I might suggest rubbing it with a little wax paper every once in a while. And that will help with the release of it if you find it gets stuck at all. Okay, so I am going to put that away. I think we're done the die cutting. We'll find out in a minute if I'm correct. All right, let's bring in our card base. So this is just started off as a piece of eight and a half by five and a half. So it's half a sheet of eight and a half by 11. So eight and a half by five and a half. And I scored it at the four and a quarter inch mark. And you can do that with your simply scored or you can do it on our paper trimmer it has a scoring blade on it as well. So there's the card base. And here is the layer, the five and a quarter by four inch layer. I just ran through the machine with the stitch greenery die. And I'm just gonna add that layer to my card front. And this should have about an eighth of an inch around it on all four sides. And once it's straight, just press down and this is a little note for for you so you don't do the same thing as me um, I put a little bit too much glue on and some of it is oozing it through the holes so if you do just a little tiny bit less glue I had a little bit um, a fat stream coming through so just do it like a little bit less and then you won't have this what I I tend to do after this is dry, I just take a white eraser and I um, I kind of get rid of the glue that way. And it does come off. I wait, it's better to wait until it's like kind of fully dry because otherwise it gets, uh... but anyway, now it's no longer sticky. So if that happens, a good white eraser is always awesome for that. Okay. So next we're gonna cut our banner layer. And I'm using some of this gingham cottage paper. You may have seen it. It's a big pack of paper, 48 sheets of 12 by 12 paper. That's a lot of paper, but it's got a lot of good neutral gingham designs in all the fall colors. And I am using the garden green one. I like this smaller pattern. Um, this is, there's also a larger pattern on the opposite side, but I, I tend to like the little small pattern. So I want to create a banner for the end of this. So the way I'm going to do it, I've got a centering ruler here, but you don't necessarily need one, but this is where the centering ruler is kind of cool because you've got, you know, these different lines. My um, piece measures two inches by five inches. So what I'm going to do is center this um, there's a one inch on either side of here or measure over one inch and up half an inch but on my ruler I can see where the half inch 
mark is. So it's these little arrows right here. So I'm just using that as my little guide for the half inch. So it kind of makes it easy to do. And then I'm just going to, so half an inch up from the bottom and one inch over from either side because it's centered. And then you just draw a little line or you can just cut as well. Sometimes it's like easy, just as easy just to cut from the corner to the pencil line. But I just want to show you because that's what it looks like down here at the bottom. And if I was doing a bunch of these cards, I would make myself a template out of a different color cardstock, just a scrap piece of cardstock. And then I would just trace that onto all of my other pieces instead of doing the measuring each time. I love creating templates for myself like that if I'm making multiple cards. So then all I have to do is just cut along the pencil lines. This is just like a really shallow banner like that. Okay, and then we're going to glue this to the front trying to use less glue. And then let's take a look at the original card. I'm in about half an inch in from this top layer and centered from top to bottom is, uh, maybe it's three eighths of an inch. Half an inch, three eighths of an inch, somewhere along there. Okay, and then just glue that down. And then we're going to take our pieces here. Oh, we do need to do a little stamping. Come here. So this piece is going to glue onto here, but we need to stamp two pieces first. Okay, so we've got the little kitty cat and we've got the little hello. And I'm going to stamp the hello in soft suede. And just kind of center it. Okay, I didn't do a good job of centering that, but it it should be centered if you want to make it look good. You know, I could layer that heart over on top of it and that will make it look better. See, this one's tucked under and this one will maybe be over. That's what you can do. So one of the reasons I had a hard time centering this is I, I had this on an A block here. Um, so sometimes when you have your your image on a small block like this, there's a bit of distortion at the edge. I love our blocks because they're very nice to hold because they don't have sharp edges. But when you have this tiny little stamp, there's distortion around the end, that the edges. So that's why I tend to put them on an angle. If I had put this on a B block though, I just want to show you. If I had put this on a B block, then um, I would have been able to see better. In fact, okay, I just want to show you. I'm going to just die cut one more label. I could. I could just let it go and stick the heart on top, but I just want to show you. Let me die cut one more label off the side here. Sorry, it's a little off camera. I'm just going to go through and back. And I could stamp on the back side of this, but on the back side, that little edge is not quite as nice. So I want to actually stamp on the front side of the die cut. Okay, let's try this again. Now this is on a B block. The one thing you'll have to be careful of on a B block is that you don't catch any ink anywhere else. Okay, so now I can see my full label when I'm stamping down and then I should be able to center it better. See, that's better because it's on a bigger block. So basically I was using a little bit 
too much of a small block. I do like to match the size of the stamp with the block because when you use too large of a block it squishes your stamp too much it's too heavy for your stamp but in this case when you have to see the edges for stamping purposes you might need to go up a block size just so you can get a clearer vision of what's going on okay that was just a little aside about stamping and things that i've noticed about our stamping and look this is a cute little cat right here it must be stamped. Okay, this is Tuxedo Black ink, and I'm going to put the cat down here in the corner, like that. Close this up, and I'm going to color the kitty with Smoky Slate and Flirty Flamingo. So I am just using the light Smoky Slate right now. And I'm not doing any shading. I'm just coming along. This whole cat will be covered in smoky slate, including the tail. Let that dry a bit. And then I'm going to blend in with Flirty Flamingo Light. Um, and I'm just going to hit the inside of the ears and the little cheeks. And that's just going to give it just a little bit different of a color. It actually, I don't know, it looks a little bit, a little bit pink. Maybe you can barely even notice it. You can notice it better in person than on camera. And then I'm going to take my Smoky Slate Dark and just do a couple of little ticks on either side. Because this cat's a gray tabby. And those will probably blend in a little bit. My ink is still a little wet or my blends are still a little wet but you can kind of see now my little cat has some little stripes on it. Okay so I you could you we could have die cut this cat we could have absolutely done that but we had already done a lot of die cutting so I decided just to stamp the cat in the doorway. So that's the way it will look. And so let's do some assembly here. We're going to put some Tombow on here, on here, and very lightly along the bottom. And then I'm just gonna kind of use my other card as a guide. I find I do that a lot. Once I've got my card placement exactly how I want it, I'll use my um, the other card as a guide so that I don't have to figure out where to position things again. Okay. I think that looks, that looks pretty good. It's about where I had it before. Okay. When you're happy, press down. And then I want to go pretty light on this one. And just add that to the center. Okay. And this little guy, I'm going to pop, oh, grab the wrong one. <laughs> After all the work of redoing my stamping, I'm going to put two dimensionals. Oh, but before I do that, I want to scoop my heart underneath here like right about that. So I'll just put a little dot of Tombow. I'm just going to hold this here. Angle that there. Okay, I got that placement. And then we'll add this on top. Right here. And get the other hearts on here. And one 
one more heart here. And see, I just followed the colors of the flowers. So I didn't, I, I really didn't have to think too much about my color choices because I used green and then I used the same colors as the flowers of the original card. And then to finish everything off, I'm going to grab my Pearl Basic. No, they're called Iridescent Pearls Jewels. We have a lot of products that sound similar. And after a while, without thinking, I mash up the names a bit. I'm going to put a pearl right on top of that doorknob. I know it's a bit contrived because you know there's a doorknob there but it just looked good to me I don't know why whenever I, I played I had a few different placements I just kind of what I did was I laid the pearls down if you just lay them down just like this if you lay them down like this you can move them around and then when you're happy with your placement then you go and you press on them but I, I do play around a little bit and I usually do three and this was like the arrangement that made me happy um, but play around with your embellishments and see what you like there's usually a, a way that makes your brain um, feel that it's happy so there is my little cat and I really like the way this one turned out um, it turned out a little crisper so if you wait just a little bit so I did the smoky slate light then I did the flirty uh, flamingo light and then I went back into the stripes and the stripes on this cat are a little bit more pronounced than on this one they blended in a little bit so if you just wait a little bit until it's dry I think you'll, you'll be happier with your cat uh, if you're doing the little stripes on the side so there's the card I hope you like it and I know it might be I'm gonna see I'm gonna come back over here so um, when we when we do these cards right I'm gonna bring my microphone closer okay so I want to show you the sketch nope not the sketch I want to show you the card all right And then I'm going to bring in my card. Okay. Let's see. It needs to go this way. Up a bit. This way. Okay. You know what I'm going to do? I'm moving this over to this side. Okay. Now I have a bigger spot to put in my card. It's hard to do this. It's mirrored. Okay. So you can see I've got the green background. Change the green up a little bit. I've got, because I wanted to match my paper, right? Because the garden green is in the gingham cottage paper. And then I did the three colors, the uh, the blushing, the calypso, and the crushed curry for the hearts. Um, and so you can kind of see the bones of the card. A little bit different, but you can see the bones right there, right? So it's kind of cool always to see how or the original card went to the new card, huh? I think that's kind of fun. All right, let me let me make that disappear. There we go. <laughs> All right. Okay, so um, I wanted to let you know that I do have a host code running for September. Here it is. There's just a few days left. And if you spend $50 using the host code this month, you will be getting a sampler pack of the Celebrate Everything Designer Series paper. It is uh, six by six, and it is um, it's just nice because you get forty eight sheets um, of the six by six. Um, it's a sampler of the host paper. Um, so um, use the host code, spend fifty dollars, and I will be mailing those out in October for everyone that earns them. And uh, if you spend $15 at least um, any time during the month, if you don't you don't want to spend $50 or can't, um, you'll also you will get one of my free with purchase tutorials. So um, no matter the size of your order, as long as it's over 15, you can get one of my free with purchase tutorials, which is kind of a nice little perk in it of itself. Okay. 
Um, all the supplies that I use today are over on my blog or they're also down below. So if you have any questions about a product, just go ahead and click on it. It takes you to the Stampin' Up! store. And so in the Stampin' Up! store, there's a uh, link to the product with more photos of the product. Sometimes there's samples, other samples with that product. Um, and then there's usually like a show more and you can find out details like sizes and colors if it's paper. Um, so that's really handy so that you have the link just so you can go and take a look at it and uh, decide if you need the product. Okay, oh, and don't forget to register for World Card Making Day because that's gonna be a fun and free event for you to um, to attend. And then you'll also be able to, if you don't have any of the bundles, you can always still substitute out with something else that you have on hand in your craft room. Okay, I am gonna to talk to all of you and see how you are this morning. Good morning, Dee and Ellie and Marty, my lovely team members. Um, so Marty said, ask a question, does the small rectangle in the die set fit into the smaller door die? Mm, let me see, there's the small rectangle. Um, so I'm just gonna pull this out, Marty. So there is, there is a small stitched rectangle. So the door opening, the one that I used, you know, definitely, you know, fits if that's the one you mean. There is also the small um, rectangle that can be used for um, the greetings because there are um, some other greetings that would fit into that. Um, little rectangle there it's just it's a really nice little um, set to create um, cards with um, Marty says I've been uh, stamping for a long time stamping up stamping blocks are one of the very best out there some stamping blocks have a grid but I find that too distracting and I never use it yeah I really love our blocks but you with everything you have to know how to use things um, and like that, that um, greeting that I was trying to stamp, it, it wasn't, it wasn't working um, with that smaller block. And I should have realized that yesterday. I think I just got lucky with my placement the first time. And I thought, oh, no problem. Uh, but then, you know, now I realized I really did. If I'm going to stamp that a few times, um, you really want to have it so that you um, uh, have it on the correct size block. Hello, Geraldine. Good morning. I'm so glad you're joining us this morning. Um, and I, I should mention for, for everyone out there who might want to join my team, um, next month we are going to have a starter kit special. I um, just noticed they posted that on the demonstrator website um, today. And actually, I really like this special because it's an easy one. Um, when you um, purchase the starter kit, instead of getting your regular $125, you're going to get $150. $55 uh, for just spending $99. Spend $99 and you get $155 worth of product plus free shipping. It's like such a good deal. So uh, I just thought I'd mention that that um, starter kit special does not start until October fourth though. So um, a few days. Actually, that would be next next Tuesday. Yeah, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, I'll talk about it some more. Um, but it's a really good deal getting lots of product for only $99. Okay. Um, Dee says um, she's been using this er eraser to remove the excess glue. Or if you want to get random sticky spot from the tear and tape. Yes, sometimes um, the the tear and tape um, will leave like a, a residue um, and it's not very expensive. Um, uh, and she left you guys a link. Um, I love the little kitty waiting at the door. So sweet. That's what uh, Dee just said. Hello from Puerto Rico. And uh, Nalita. Um, Nalita has light. Finally, Nalita got hit uh, by uh, Fiona. 
And um, so now we we have uh, new worries, not for Puerto Rico, but now we have other parts of the U.S. that are going to get hit by another storm. So <sighs> the hurricane season can't finish fast enough, right? Um, Nelita said, even on the bigger block, you tilted the word why. Yeah, so I have this thing about... Um, you know, it might be okay if I hadn't tilted it because the, um, so what Nalita is talking about is so, um, normally you would put your greeting on here like this and I'm just gonna switch back over here for a second. So for this one, it would have worked. I'm, I'm using the back of this one. You can um, you can see all the way around it. Um, sometimes you want you don't want to go too big on your block, but you want to be able to see the four sides. And that's when I tilt it. And I didn't need to do it for that one, but I just did it um, because sometimes I've had the situation where I've kind of needed to keep the block smaller but I still want to see all four sides so this case you didn't need to but keep it in mind I often do tilt my stamps to when stamping one of the reasons I tilted it on my a block which I could probably see the top and bottom and maybe that would have worked too I don't know I just use different tools sometimes tilting works other times it doesn't and I I tend to probably tilt more than I actually need to so to answer your question Alita I didn't need to on that one but keep it in mind as a tool for the future uh, D said so happy to hear things are improving uh, for Nalita in Puerto Rico and I agree. Um, uh, Marty says her ki the kitty looks like her Eddie. Ah, that's sweet. Um, D says very sweet card. Um, Marty uh, said she couldn't see the stitching on the rectangle before. Um, good. Good morning, Beverly. I'm so glad you're here. Um, I hope um, if you didn't watch the whole thing that you will watch the replay later on. And I hope you guys all have a great day. I will be back with another live on Friday. On Fridays, I go live on my YouTube channel. So uh, make sure you look for uh, me there. I also um, post everything on my blog so if you need to find um, my youtube channel just head over to my blog it's usually the very first link in any video i'll have um, a link to my blog post but from there it's blog post central all the information you need is there and if you can't find something go ahead and um, fill out the contact form and i will be able to answer your question from there as well Okay, everyone, I hope you have a great week. Think about registering from World Card Making Day this uh, weekend. Um, it's uh, on Saturday. I hope you will join Stampin' Up! and the rest of us as we make some cards on World Card Making Day. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.